it's Evelyn and welcome back to my Flosstube channel for Flosstube episode 14. If you are new here, I'm Evelyn, this is Evelyn Across the Pond, and this is a channel where I talk about cross stitch and all things crafty. I have the full gamut in this video, sewing, knitting, quilting, everything you can think of. And if you are coming back, thank you so much for coming and spending a little bit more stitchy time with me. How are you guys? Oh my god! It's been probably like a month and a bit, maybe a month and a half, since my last upload. And boy oh boy, do I have a lot to show you today. <laughs> As you might have guessed, we're in a bit of a different setup because I put up my Christmas decorations because I'm that kind of person. <laughs> and so I wanted to film down here so that you got kind of a cool new Christmassy background. I even got like special Christmas curtains. For this year, at the end of the video, stay tuned, because at the end of the video, I'll walk you around my, like, initial Christmas setup here in the downstairs, so stay tuned for that. So yeah, a little bit of a different locale for this particular video, and let's see, life update. So since last time that I filmed, I've still been <laughs> doing stuff for my fellowship literally constantly. I've been so busy, that's really why. I haven't had a chance to film um, just PhD has been crazy so many like online conferences like the number of online conferences I have been to in the last like two months is just insane and in fact I have another one this week Thursday Friday and Saturday and because of time difference for me it's gonna be from like 4 p.m. to midnight every night Woo! <laughs> we love to see it so yeah that's what's been going on with work I'm working on another chapter. I'm about halfway through it. Um, this is chapter three of five. And yeah, I'm about halfway through it. I'm hoping I can get it done by like the end of the month so that I can get a little bit of a start on the fourth chapter before Christmas. But we'll see with all these conferences and stuff. The other huge news since the last time that I filmed was that, so remember when I mentioned that I was gonna go wedding dress shopping? In my last video well my family like my mom my stepdad and my sister flew to the UK to surprise me for my wedding dress shopping so that my mom and my sister could be there when I picked my dress and it was the literal most moving special thing that anyone has ever done for me and when I found out I literally sobbed for like four hours before I could emotionally handle that it was real. And even when they got here, I still didn't really think it was real because I hadn't seen them in two years because of COVID. <laughs> so this, it was just a huge moment. And um, I'll put up a picture, my sister took some pictures. And then when we went to the dress shop, it was like the fates aligned and I found my dress with my mom and my sister there. And it was the literal most special happy happy thing ever I can't even I can't even talk about it it's just it was the literal best this was like two weeks ago now so yeah I got my dress I don't want to show it just in case Neko looks at this because he does watch my videos sometimes let's just say it's very well I don't even know if I want to do that it's sparkly and like ele elegant ah I don't even know how to describe it it's just perfect when I put it on it was like me like I was wearing me. And I feel like it wasn't even like, it looked like I, me and the dress were one as opposed to that I was wearing the dress. It was like I was the dress. Does that make sense? Anyway, it's the literal most beautiful thing. <laughs> and eventually I will be able to show you. But yeah, there is bling. But not too much bling. I like the blend of the bling. Like there's bling on top and then it kind of blends into, um, but anyway. Anyway, I, that's already, I've given too much away. <laughs> but yeah, so then after they left, I immediately got sick because, of course, all of the emotional buildup just immediately fell down. <laughs> I didn't have COVID, though. Thank God I took multiple tests. It wasn't COVID. It was just like a really bad cold. And that kind of threw me down for like a week. And then this past week, I was finally starting to feel better. So I got back to doing, you know life tasks and work stuff and everything and I also managed to get my third dose of the vaccine because as an immunocompromised person here in the UK we're gonna have four 
because we were immunocompromised under the first two, they wouldn't be as effective. So we're getting a third primary dose and then the booster shot. So I can get my booster in six months from now. And this third one hurt, y'all. My arm, I swear to God, it was like all, it hurt all up my arm, up my neck, down my back. Like the whole side of my body hurt. It was horrible. It still kind of hurts a bit. This was like two days ago, maybe. And it, it still hurts. So yeah, that kind of knocked me down for the count for another like two days. But anyway, I'm feeling a lot better now. <laughs> I swear to God, wasn't the wasn't I sick the last time I filmed? It's like a classic thing. Anyway, I feel like because of COVID, you like forget that you used to be just sick sometimes. <laughs> so I like, I feel like I used to be sick way more often than I am now. But I feel like now anytime I'm sick, I'm like, oh my God, I'm sick. Like <laughs> I've never been sick before. It's weird. Yeah. And the reason that I do mention that I'm immunocompromised, cause I know it might be like kind of awkward and I'm not trying to share too much information. It's just because I believe that we should be raising awareness about the fact that like there are lots of invisible illnesses out there. And just because I might look young and healthy doesn't necessarily mean that I am. And <laughs> so I just want to, you know, let people know that there are many people who have, you know, invisible conditions or disabilities and, you know, we, sh we should be cognizant of that. And um, if you are a person who has an invisible illness or disability or disease, I just want you to know that I completely understand and I appreciate you and I hope you're doing okay. <laughs> Okay, so with that being said, in terms of stitching, there is just an absolute load of stuff to show you <laughs> today. I have FFOs, I have new starts, finishes, and FFOs, I have more new starts, I have another finish, I have my quilt progress, I have a bunch of knitting progress, I have a little sewing project that I finished and I have huge Christmas stitching plans all to talk about today. So before we get into that I'll just quickly talk about material minute. So we didn't have a material minute last time so I am gonna do one this time even though there is so much to talk about and if you are new to my channel I am a PhD student in early American history here at the University of Cambridge and I work on material culture, which is essentially the study of objects and sort of people who study material culture believe that objects can tell us as much about the past as written documents and written sources, letters, etc. can. And I work on the politics of material culture, which means like the way that objects interact with the political sphere and like how objects are and always have been political. And so I wanted to share this week an object that I'm actually currently writing about in my chapter. So this is like a little bit of an insight into some research I'm currently doing. So this chapter that I'm writing is on the embargo in 1807, which is basically <laughs> the US was in a conflict, like a political conflict with France and Britain. And to avoid going into war, which would eventually be the War of 1812 because this didn't work, but <laughs> to avoid war, they decided to put economic sanctions on these European powers, saying that no one could import or consume any French or British goods, um, specifically British though, and it blocked ships as well and like the cargo trade and everything. So if, if you didn't know about it, <laughs> but eventually this is kind of considered one of the stepping stones to the war of 1812. But so I'm working on the embargo and because during the embargo period, you weren't supposed to be importing goods. It kind of created this boost for American manufacturing as people kind of turn to like buy local, um, which is something that I think we think about very often as a like a modern concept, but actually this has been something that people have been dealing with for centuries. <laughs> this idea of like the, uh, of ethical consumption and purchasing local and um, supporting local businesses, etc. And so the object for this week is this Philadelphia Queensware cup, 
So Queensware, or like British creamware, which was sort of Britain's response to Chinese porcelain, which you might be familiar with like Wedgwood, Wedgwood pottery and stuff like that. So this was extremely popular. And during this period, Americans still wanted ceramics. And so there was a development of some local pottery, creamware, ceramic manufacturing firms in the United States. And Philadelphia became a huge center for this kind of American Queensware market. And I was recently reading some articles about this. So it's suspected to be made either by the Washington Pottery or the Colombian Pottery, both in Philadelphia. The Colombian Pottery was owned by Binney and Ronaldson, Archibald Binney and James Ronaldson, who also were huge type founders in Philadelphia, which type in the 18th century and early 19th century, and before that, I mean, since the invention of the printing press, is the little metal pieces that you put into the printing press to spell out the fonts that then get printed onto paper. So type was like the individual letters <laughs> and symbols, which now, of course, we use type as like the verb to type on a keyboard. But type in the age of the printing press was the actual individual letters that then the printer would set into the printing press to spell out the text before printing it. So anyway, Binney and Ronaldson were huge type founders and then they used their success from that to help fund this pottery business. And they used a master potter who was British by birth, Alexander Trotter. And then the Washington pottery was owned by a man named Maloney and he came sort of just after Binney and Ronaldson, um, but seems to have been of a similar success, although I would suspect the Colombian pottery was more successful, but I think Maloney in letters, etc., tried to <laughs> say that they were, you know, that they were the better of the businesses. They were kind of in a rivalry. Anyway, so this cup is not to be made by either one of those two. And I was recently reading some articles by archaeologists studying Philadelphia Queensware in this period from some excavations that they've done. And like once upon a time, it was assumed that because these cups are yellow, that they were actually of worse quality than British creamware because the ideal for ceramics is to be white. Um, and that the purity of the clay makes the whiter um, material. And because this was like yellow, they thought that it was the clay was of worse quality. But what I've seen in a lot of the newspapers and letters and stuff that I've seen from these two companies, they were constantly uh, on the search for the whitest and best clay. So there seems to be a bit of a disconnect there because it, if they've put so much effort into that, then why are these kind of yellow? And it seems like some of the conclusions that these archaeologists have drawn is that there's actually more of a yellow glaze here that makes the Philadelphia brand of Queensware very different from the kind of yellow bodied earthenware that we would think of as the traditional like lower quality yellow kind of ceramics. The, <laughs> the actual makeup and composition of the clay used to to make these pots was much more similar to the like Wedgwood Staffordshire kind of pottery in England. So I will link the articles that I'm talking about down below in case you have any interest. But the reason why I'm interested in this for my PhD is because in this embargo chapter, I'm really trying to argue uh, that this process of trying to bolster American domestic manufacture was part of this process of building American nationalism during the early Republic in the lead up to the War of 1812. And that this object in trying to, you know, attest to the equal value and quality of American produced items is kind of an attempt to lay claim to the kind of national sovereignty that other European countries like France and Britain experienced during this time. So yeah, so that's a little bit of my, <laughs> something I'm currently working on. Editing me here, I just wanted to say that I forgot to mention in the video 
that the new Animal Crossing update has come out, and so I've been playing a lot of that. And I actually, like a week or so ago, went and visited Elizabeth Frizzy Lizzie Stitches' island, and we hung out together, and it was super, super cute, and it was so fun. And if you don't watch her channel, you have to. She's literally so cute, and I love her. Okay, bye. The only other thing that I wanted to say is that I have had some people ask me before about makeup that I wear in my videos and like what products do I use and stuff and so for not to speak about this in the video because like some people might not be interested in makeup at all um it is one of my hobbies <laughs> but like I am not gonna turn this into a makeup channel so what I thought I would do is if I wear makeup during a video I'll put in one part of the description the products that I used on my face so that if you were interested you could kind of see what I'm using and then of course you can like message me to ask me about anything if you wanted to but yeah since I actually did my makeup today for the first time in like 900 years I thought I will, I will put the products I use in the description in case you were interested only because I have had people ask me about it before so let us get into it this will be a very long video so you will need a drink you will need a snack prepare accordingly <laughs> I have my drink as you can see I'm using it in a Christmas mug. I got this from Sainsbury's last year. So cheers. My second tea of the day. We love a tea. Okay. So let's start with FFOs. And I will start with the projects that you have seen before. And then I will do the ones that you haven't seen before. So I will do this one first because I think it's the oldest. I finished my Frosted Pumpkin. Christmas wreath into a pillow finally <laughs> so here it is this is a 16 by 16 pillow I think and on the back I followed the pumpkins tutorial for clue 11 and so I used some flurry fabric from Ruby Star Society by Kimberly Kite and it's like an envelope pillow over the pillow form. And then around the edge, I used some Lady.Creed's trim in Berry Crush, I believe. This is on 28 count natural cashel from Zweigart. I did add my little 2021 charm here on the back. And I also added my little Evelyn across the pond iron on transfer thing. I will link the shop that I got these from down below. And I have the called for jab coat buttons on here. These are the pink with red sparkle, I think. Tiny pink with red sparkle, something like that. And I used all the called for colors. This was my absolute favorite project of this year. And I'm so happy that I'm like getting to display it for Christmas now. It sits over here in the side chair. You'll see it later during my little Christmas tour. And this is just like the literal most fun. I love this. It just makes me so happy. Oh, oh, it's so cute. The only changes that I made to this was I made Santa's mouth smaller and I made Mrs. Claus's mouth smaller. And everything else is the literal exact same as called for in the chart. It's all DMC. It was definitely a lot of stitching but I think it looks so good finished as a pillow. And I'm super, super happy that I did this. Favorite, favorite, favorite project. Favorite project. Oh my God, I love it so much. The next FFO I will show is this set of like four. <laughs> I did my cube finishes that I've been talking about for the Frosted Pumpkin cubes for their little small charts. And I did them all in like one day. I will show you this one first and then I'll show you the other three because the other three match. So this is Waves Galore by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. And I have done a little cube finish. So essentially I used their tutorial for how to do this and then I kind of adapted it. So they use 
and as did I, those little foam blocks that you use when you're doing like flower decorating. And so I cut it up and everything and they cut theirs into like full on cubes, but I wasn't sure I wanted them to be so thick. So I had a big block that was kind of like long and rectangular. And essentially I cut it into half this way and then I cut it into half this way so that I had four. So they ended up being like a square this way, but then much thinner this way. And so I just pinned my project to it and then I pinned some fabric on the back. I used like a summery botanical pink from this. This is a craft cotton company. And then around the edge, I put this little lace trim and then on top I did a bow with a mixture of like an organza orange and then more of the lace and so this is sunshore and waves lure so this will be displayed next summer I love this I did mine on 28 count mint from picture this plus and I used all of the call for colors which is I believe like a week's and then DMC I think Anyway, they're called for in the chart. So this was the first one. Then the next three were my fall finishes. So these are my three little fall ones. So the first one is Oh My Gourd by the Pumpkins. And I did mine on 30 count straw gingham from Weeks Dye Works. And for all three of these, I used the orange leaves from the Moda Thankful collection. And then I used a mixture of, on this one, like a yellow organza ribbon and an orange organza. And then around the edge, I used some green rickrack, a more brown organza ribbon, and a like maroon plaid ribbon around the edge on this one. And I tried to do them each a little bit different from each other. The next one is Pumpkin Spice and Everything Nice. I did this one on 28 Count Oaken from Picture This Plus, I'm pretty sure. And if not, I'll put it on the screen. And I did this all called for. And then again, we have the Moda Thankful on the back. And then the side on this one, I braided together two of the organzas and some of the lace and put that around the edge. I also have like a twill tape sort of thing and then some orange gingham. And then on the top, I kind of tied the braided part together. This is probably my least favorite of them just because it's a little flat on the top. So I think next year I might get some like dollhouse size pumpkins or something and glue them here on the top for like a little bit of height to it. But for this year, this was fine. But I think next year I might get something else to put on top of this. But I really like the braid effect on the sides. So that's pumpkin spice and everything nice. And then the last one, which I'm not sure if I had started this the last time that I filmed, but I have started it and finished it by <laughs> this time. So this is I Love Fall by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. And I did this one on 28 count relic from Picture This Plus. And on the back is the thankful again. And then I used some red rickrack and some like maroony gingham for the side on this one. And then on the top, I made this kind of like present bow like this out of some heart ribbon. And I got all this finishing stuff from Hobbycraft. So none of it is like particularly fancy, but it all did the job. And this is called for again. So the one over dyed in this one is in the word fall and some of the leaves and that is classic colorworks fall and leaves I believe so those are all my cube finishes and I posted a picture on my Instagram of them set up um with some of the other FFOs and that I did 
this year. So I will put that up on the screen. And yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with them. I think they worked out well. So I'll be excited to do more of the seasonal ones and have those up every year. So I think it'll be something that I continue to do is make these little cubes because I just think they're really cute. The next two FFOs were surprises completely. They were surprise starts, they were <laughs> surprise finishes, and surprise FFOs. So while I was doing all of my fall stitching, I just suddenly really wanted to do some Halloween projects and I hadn't planned to do any at all. And then I kind of just was like, you know, screw it, I'm gonna do Halloween stuff. So I started two projects and finished them and FFO'd them, <laughs> so I'll show you those. So they were both, well, one's kind of bigger, but the other one was very small. Um, and I'll show you that one first. So this is a little ornament from the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery that was in the Halloween 2021 like special edition of just cross stitch I think the chart is called have a possum Halloween I'll show you a picture of what the chart is supposed to look like because I did mine a little differently so I used just the center motif of the little kitty and I made it into a pillow so this is on I think it's 32 count lavendula from chromatic alchemy which was my fabric of the month club and I did a stitch from stash conversion on this using some of my color and cotton threads of the month which I'll show you later in haul and then I used a toile which was called for for these little lines in the pumpkin I don't know if the sparkle is picking up can you see the sparkle it sparkles a bit <laughs> and then on the back I use some of the Jill Howarth tiny treaters fabric for I think Riley Blake and I have my little name thing and my little charm fully inspired by made by Michelle McGraw I love her and I love her smalls and so this is like their little orange word search fabric so it says like you know haunt and candy and party and I just thought it was really cute and this is my little Halloween kitty. And then around the edge, I used Lady Dot Creates mini pom poms in Witchy, which I had left over from when I finished Hello Petal, I think. So yeah, so this was a surprise little small that I stitched in October. And then the other surprise start is not really a small, but it also didn't take me that long. And that is, I started and finished Hello from Liz Matthews' Hocus Pocus. So here it is. Ignore the ring light. So it says, it's just a bunch of Hocus Pocus, which is a reference to the 1993 cinematic masterpiece, Hocus Pocus, um, <laughs> which I love that movie. I watch it every year and I actually started this while watching Hocus Pocus, you know, for vibes and everything. So this is on 40 count sand by Picture This Plus and I use the Gentle Art cast iron skillet for the words. And then I did as Liz suggested in the pattern and I did like an oversized finish. So this is a full fat eighth, I believe and I put it in a 12 by 18 frame that I got off of Amazon and I will link this below it's like a super distressed kind of blacky brown kind of frame and I thought it looked super spooky so I had this and the kitties and my fall little cubes displayed and I'm just I was super happy with it it wasn't planned at all but they were starts and finishes and FFOs and it was just really cool to have some spooky decor this year because I didn't actually decorate for Halloween last year and I'm a big Halloween person so that felt weird to me but this year I did so I will be doing some more planned Halloween stitching next year and I did do one more Halloween start which I'll show you in starts so then the last FFO that I have I actually can't show you because it is for a secret Christmas smalls exchange with some other floss tube friends here on the cross stitch interwebs. 
and I have finished it and FFO'd it and I meant to ship it out this week so I'm not going to show you that yet because I want it to be a surprise but I will film like a little insert of it that I can put in the next video hopefully once she's already received it and then you'll be able to see it but it's just a little a little Christmas small that I've finished up to show you know Christmas joy and love this season in our beautiful wonderful community that I'm so grateful for so those were all of my FFOs so now I will show you my one finish okay so this is the next of the seasonal trees from Caterpillar Cross Stitch this is Hello Sunshine and I was doing this as part of the stitch along I'll show you where it was last time. I was almost finished. And here it is now. So I finished the whole tree. This is on 28 count white cashel. I'm doing them all four of them on white cashel just to make them all the same. And so the last thing that I had to do was just finish this final part with the B. And the only change that I made which I'll try to hold it up closer to the camera so you can see is the B is supposed to have like a smiley face on him but I just preferred him to have just like a single eye kind of like how the other animals all have one eye so I just gave him one little eye there and I used all of the call four colors and I just think this is super cute and fun and I'm gonna finish this the same as I did hello dear and hello petal where it'll be like a flat finish for my easel with some palm trim around the outside. I think for this one I'm going to use Berry Crush as well from Lady Dog Creates to kind of pull out those like bright magenta e pink colors. But yeah, this is just super fun and summery stitch and I really wanted to get it done before I made a start on Hello Pumpkin for fall and I did. So yay! So then we have new starts and I have a couple, <laughs> I have a couple. So I'm pretty sure, I don't think I had started this in my last video. If I did, uh, sincerest apologies. Um, but I know I have talked about it here on my channel. So I am participating in the Caterpillar Cross Stitch Lucky Nutcracker Cell. I was kindly sent the kit by Sally and the team over at Caterpillar Cross Stitch and I am behind, but I have definitely made a solid go of it. <laughs> so this is what it's supposed to look like. So we have the first four parts right now. And I have finished the first two. So here's the center tree with the presents. And then this is the adorable little Nutcracker Needle Minder that came from Caterpillar Cross Stitch as well. And then over here we have the big boy version of the Nutcracker with the little holly border and a little candy cane. This tree was a lot of stitching, <laughs> very full coverage tree, but I really think this is going to be super cute and I am going to try to keep as caught up as I can. I do have a lot of Christmas projects that I'm planning to be working on this season but this one is also definitely one of them. So I think I will go in order of the parts. So the next one that I'll do is Clara up here. And I'm doing mine on 28 count white cashel. The kit comes with Ada or even weave, but I prefer uh, stitching on linen. So I just sub that for linen, but everything else I'm using as the um, threads that were sent to me in the kit. A super fun, kind of cheerful, bright colored stitch. Okay, the next one, I definitely know I didn't show you, but I did talk about it in my last video. So I told you that I was going to start the Cozy Cafe Sal from the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. Um, this one I am definitely not trying to catch up on because I'm like literally like 11 parts behind. This is more just something that I want to be working on in the next year. So I just went ahead and started it. And this is what it looks like. The most recent part that came out was the pumpkin spice fox latte cup, which is the literal cutest thing I've ever seen. And I told you in my last video that I was planning to do kind of like a switched up version of this where I was gonna do mine 
on like a chalkboard fabric and then changed the lettering to be like a white rather than having like a purpley kind of background and then the dark lettering. And I finished, or well, I started and finished most of the first part, all but the bottom border. So this is on Slate by Fabrics by Stephanie. And that's the little raspberry mocha. This will have beading eventually, but it doesn't quite yet. And I've done the top part of the border and then cafe menu, and I'm working on bringing that little bottom shelf across so that I can do the Earl Grey. And I did the back stitching, so. But yeah, that will have beads on it eventually, like on the raspberries and stuff. Now, when I showed you that I got this fabric in haul, it's washing out a bit. It's, it's a bit more like that. It's just the bright light. <laughs> when I showed you that I got this fabric in haul, I said it was a 32 count, which is what it was listed as on the website. This is definitely not a 32 count. The entire time I was stitching on this, I was like, God, it's small. Like, geez, that is small. Man, that's small. And I kept being like, God, that's just very small. But I just didn't think about it until it got to the end and the cup literally is like an inch high. Like, just kidding. I mean, it's like, it's more than an inch, but it's very small. And then I used my little measuring tool and um, measured this and this is a 36 count. This is a this is a 36 count. So I think it was mislabeled on the website, which is like fine because I mean, I didn't want it to be like ginormous anyway in terms of how I want to finish it for my kitchen. So like I'm just going to stitch it on the 36 count, but it is way smaller than it's supposed to be. This did concern me a bit because of the beads. Um because that's usually too small of a count to do beads on. But I did some like test beading and because the beads are super spread out from each other as opposed to in like a mirabilia where you might have like rows and rows of beads right next to each other, I think I can fudge it where it will work rather than me frogging the like entire thing and then having to restart it. I think I can make the beads work. If not, I will find substitute beads, but I really think that the Mill Hill is still gonna work on this from the little tests that I did. But hopefully so, because I was really excited about the beading. <laughs> but I also think it like looks really cute, so I don't wanna undo it. And I love this fabric. I love this fabric, it's perfect. It's exactly what I wanted, because I wanted it to be like, you know, a chalkboard menu at a restaurant, so anyway. But yeah, that was a bit of a frightening moment when I was like, oh my God, um, it's literally small for a reason. <laughs> it's small because it is small, everyone. So then the next two starts are my like final fall starts that I basically just wanted to start so that I have them anytime I wanna stitch on like my fall projects for next year. So the first one is Hello Pumpkin. I did start it and I shared this over on my Instagram. So this is Hello Pumpkin by Caterpillar Cross Stitch. It will look like this. And I did a middle start. This is again, 28 count white cashel. Like I said, I'm doing them all the same. And I did a middle start and then I worked down to the trunk. And then I'm working currently on the pumpkins and the like toadstool and then I'll do the grass and then I'll go back up and finish the motifs in the tree. Because for me personally, the tree motifs are the part that's fun. The bottom of the tree always just makes me want to die. I don't know why. So I'm trying to do it first so that it's like over and then I can do the top. I think it's because of the grass, because the grass is just like really, really long lines of green always with these trees. And I'm just not really a color block stitcher. Like I like doing like, tiny little things and finishing this and picking up a new color and picking up a new color so but yeah this is this is where we've got to so I'm putting this away until next year I, I do have the little owl needle minder 
from them. I'm putting this away until like fall vibes again or at least until like the spring because I'm working on Christmas stuff but I did at least want to have this be a whip before the end of the year so I will definitely next year be able to display all four caterpillar cross stitch seasonal trees which is just like really exciting that'll be the first series of charts that I've ever finished which is just really cool and I'm keeping this in the little fall bag that I made a few months ago then the last of the fall starts is a project that I started on Halloween because I felt like I needed a Halloween start and this wasn't planned either really but I just went for it <laughs> because I'd seen so many people starting it on Instagram and I was like I was like oh I'll do it someday and then I was like or I could do it now <laughs> and then I just started it so I am talking about the Midnight Magic chart from Stitch Rovia that was featured in the Cross Stitcher magazine for October 2021. I accessed this through Readly just the same as I did with the little kitty finish that I did. It will look like this. I just think it's so cool. I love this chart. And so I started mine on 28 Count Twilight from Picture This Plus. And I started right in the middle, and so we have with a little. <laughs> and the little star motif. And I did make a substitution here because I wanted the little star to be like sparkly. So I used Krynik 001 HL. And I'm gonna use that for the rest of these kind of like sparkly stars throughout. Same thing that I did with Soaring Santa by Stitchrovia last year, if you if you remember me stitching that. I used gold crinic rather than the gold back stitching. And for this one I wanted to use some silver crinic. But yeah, I'll pull that out again next year when I'm in the Halloween vibes. The last start involves kind of an early discussion of plans. So basically I only want to stitch on Christmas from now until Christmas. And so my thought process was I have like a million Christmas starts that I wanted to start to be able to work on and try to get some finishes of them as well because a lot of them are smalls between now and then. But like how do I do all of that in one thing? So my decision was I made myself kind of like a little schedule, if you will, like a guideline for all of the projects that I wanted to start and all of the like wintry holiday whips that I wanted to work on between now and Christmas. And I decided that if you guys wanted to join me because you also needed a little Christmas spirit early this year, I know that another year of the pandemic has made it so that a lot of people are decorating earlier. A lot of people are wanting to get in the spirit and feel that Christmas joy and happiness. So I have decided that I'm gonna call this the we need a little Christmas Sal or Xmas because of cross stitch X's you know me and my X joke we love to see it so <laughs> it's hashtag we need a little Christmas Sal Christmas spelled X M A S and basically I am going to be working on Christmas projects between now and then and if you want to join me please do please use the hashtag show your Christmas projects show your Christmas stitching I will be posting every project that I'm working on over on Instagram using the hashtag follow it if you're interested please join me I'm gonna put up on the screen now this I shared this on my Instagram but I'm gonna put here now the projects that I'm planning on starting and the schedule that I'm planning to do my thought process is that for the most part I'm gonna be working on new starts during the week in the hopes that over five days they'll get at least a lot of progress or maybe a finish and then on the weekends I'm gonna work on whips or really really small Christmas malls Again, hoping for lots of progress and finishes and trying to work on everything over several days. Obviously, if I don't finish things, it's not like a big deal or anything, but I just didn't want to do like a project a day because then you just don't, you put in like a thread and you're like, okay, well, next project. Like I wanted more time with each of them than that. A lot of them are Frosted Pumpkin starts. I know I told you a few months ago that I really wanted to do like some kind of like frosty July thing. Well, I've saved it for Christmas. So like literally like three quarters of these are frosted pumpkin charts. I've given myself a free choice, meaning that I can work on anything else 
of these projects that I wanted to pull out again, like if something was really close to a finish or I was just like dying to stitch on it again. And that also goes for throughout those weeks. If there's a time where I just like need to put it down and pick up another one of these projects, I'll, I'll do that. I'm going to give myself, you know, I, I'm going to be lenient with myself on, the, on this structure. But the goal is to only be working on Christmas projects. And I also, if I finish a project in the middle of the week, then I can work on another one of these Christmas projects until the weekend start or time or whatever. And I will have each of these projects linked in the description box down below um, with designers and everything. So yeah, that's my plans for We Need a Little Christmas Sal. And if you want to join me and start some Christmas things and you wanted a bit of schedule because it felt overwhelming, then, you know, <laughs> please do. If you already are working on your Christmas projects, then just join in on the hashtag. That would be great. I'd love to see what everyone's working on and get some ideas for maybe some charts I would want to do next year. Obviously, you don't need to do almost exclusively frosted pumpkin like me but i just love their cute christmas stuff i just love it so that being said i did start christmas morning goodies <laughs> and this is my last start it's gonna look like this and my thought is that i kind of want to finish this as like the center of one of those wooden advent calendars with like the drawers around it we'll see how it turns out but this is how far i am i have finished the border and i'm starting on the bow on the top of the present I'm doing this on 32 count raw silver from Zweigart, so it's like super sparkly. It doesn't really pick up on camera as much as it picks up in real life, but it's like really sparkly. <laughs> and I'm using the call for colors, so there's only one over dyed and it's Weeks Dye Works Robin's Egg. This is like a really bright colored kind of Christmas thing, but I just thought it was really cute. And I thought because it has like the little toys in the stocking, it would be a cute thing to do as an advent calendar finish. So that's my thoughts, but we'll see. And I'm gonna work on that more tonight. That's the end of the starts. <laughs> I told you there was so much today. Okay, so now we're going into whips. So the next project, um, or like the whip, the first whip I wanna show you is my 100 Owls from Owl Forest Embroidery. I've been doing this sow for over a year now it had its birthday in october and the sow finished like eons ago but i am very close to finishing now <laughs> i really am close this is what it'll look like this is where it was the last time you saw it and here's where it is now so we're getting there so i worked in this corner over here let me pull over the board and I filled in this part over here. So I added these little owls and this vine and this like edge of the chart. So I did one part and then like half of the next part because this is supposed to be mirrored over here as the next part in the chart. But I just wanted to like finish this whole side because then what I'm gonna do is come over here do these owls over here and this side and then all that's left is the literal bottom border so I'm like basically at the end I'm, I'm really getting there and I just wanted to make that little bit of more prog with it before I put it away to do all my Christmas stitching because I obviously won't be finishing this until next year now god this is such a big chart I can't believe that some people stitch this like with the sow like this is literally the biggest thing I've ever like it's just so much stitching but anyway <laughs> I do love it though and it's gonna look so good when I'm finished. I'm doing this on the call for linen which is 32 count Belfast in limestone. And yeah, that's that's where we are. So I'm nearing the end. So when I pull this out in 2022, I will come over here and do this side and then see if I can finish off the border and finish it. I might make it so that the next time I pull this out, I'm going for a finish, but we'll see. It might end up being too much stitching to try to do like those owls and the border together. I don't know, we'll see. I might get exhausted with it, but we'll see. Goals, you know. I would like to get this out of my whip pile. <laughs> it's been in there a long time. Okay, so then the next project that I worked on, I worked on because it also had a birthday in October. So this is my Long Dark Samplers Quilted Bees will look like this and 
this is where it was the last time you saw it. And here is where we are now. <laughs> Sorry. So I worked mainly, I think almost exclusively, on the red flowers and trying to finish up that hexagon. And I got a lot in there. I think I'm like probably 80% of the way done with that hexagon because there it, it's really not that much more. And then I think I'll try to fill in this purple one and then keep going across before I go down. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. I, these two hexagons are complete. This one is mostly, it looks like it's not because it's like just hanging in midair, but that's because the bottom hexagon isn't like blocking off the border. But yeah, I'm just kind of going to go box by box on this one. It'll take me literal years, but one day I will have it finished and make it into some kind of pillow. And that's on 32 count white Belfast. I only really worked on that on its birthday though. I didn't like spend too, too much time on it. So then the next whip that I worked on was me and Sean Craftivating Creations BFF project, which is Butter Believe It by Silver Creek Samplers. And I worked on this um, during one of Sean and I's Zoom calls. That's kind of the thing that we're doing now is like anytime we talk to each other on Zoom, we will both be stitching on this. <laughs> and so this is what the chart will look like. I actually have the physical chart. And this is what it looked like the last time you saw it. So I had, I have a lot to say, maybe you should get Poe. And now we have, I have a lot to say, maybe you should get popcorn. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm trying to finish the R and the N, and then I think I'm gonna do all the kernels, and then I'm gonna do the big popcorn bag over here. And I'm doing this on 32 count Sparkly's Gingerbread, and Sean and I did do a substitution. So the letters, as you can see in the chart, a lot and popcorn are supposed to be an orange that's gassed what is that gas pumpkin pie I think and we decided that we wanted it to be more of a red kind of color like the popcorn box so we subbed in plastic color words holly berry and I'm really glad we did because I think it looks really good it really pops on the fabric so that's that one not like loads of progress but one zoom calls worth of progress <laughs> And I have this in the matching bag that she and I made. This is just cute that we did that. I love that we did that. It makes it more fun to stitch on. And then last, but certainly not least, in the whip realm, I pulled out Quaker Pumpkins by Hello From Liz Matthews, which I am doing as a stitch along with Morgan, Honey Bee Stitcher. And we are calling it the Hello Quaker Cell so that it can work for any of Liz Matthews Quaker designs. Right now it's just Quaker pumpkins and Quaker snowflakes, but she has said that she wants to put out more in the future. And the last time that I worked on this was when Morgan and I literally started it in May. <laughs> so I pulled it back out for some fall stitching. This is what the chart will look like. I have it as a PDF, so here you go. And this was one of my first like big designer charts that I saw that made me want to start stitching like n not only Etsy charts <laughs> because I just loved it so much and I'm so happy that I'm finally working on it. And this is what it looked like last time you saw it. So I had just like the little stars on, and the top border and here is where it is now. So I finished from the top to the bottom on this side and this first pumpkin. So that is the full like height of the chart and then it just goes this way across like a full fat quarter basically. <laughs> I am doing this on 40 count Little Bunny from x Designs. It is more of an orangey fabric in per- yeah that's more- it's a bit more orangey maybe like that in person, but I'm using the Called For Weeks Dye Works threads, and I just really love this design. It was super fun to stitch, and hopefully I can get a lot more progress on that in my fall stitching next year. Woo! You guys, we made it. 
that's all of my projects <laughs> that I have worked on in the cross stitch realm. So now for my next crafts, because, oh yes, I worked on more crafts than that. I've had a very active crafty month and a half, apparently. I've done all kinds of stuff. So let's do knitting next. I've worked on three knitting projects since the last time that you saw me. I kind of got my knitting bug back, at least during all these conferences, man. You know, I need something to do with my hands. And sometimes it's hard to stitch because I, like, am supposed to be paying attention. And sometimes with stitching, you can get kind of, like, you know, looking at the pattern and stuff. It can get you too caught up in it. So I have been pulling out my knitting again now that it's a bit colder. And I've finished one and I am working on two other ones. One of which is like a partial finish. Let's show you the finish first. I finished my Wool and the Gang hat project I was working on. So this is using one of their wools in mauve. I will put the name on the screen. Essentially, it was knit flat and then we seamed it up with an invisible seam, um, which you can kind of see because I haven't like blocked it. It looks more invisible when you like lay it flat. And then we made this pom-pom and I use a pom-pom maker for that. I think they wanted you to use cardboard, but I just used the pom-pom maker I had. And so I've been wearing this outside <laughs> and I just think it's really fun. It was a fun project. It was just stocking stitch and then a little bit of rib on the edge. And it was some good, you know, good extra practice in stocking stitching and decreasing. But yeah, this was a good, like, beginner project. I feel like I'm getting a lot more confident in my knitting now, which is good. And I did start to use the continental knitting method over the past, like, two months. I'm still practicing it, but... It's just so much faster and easier. Oh my God, it is so much better. Oh man, because I all of the like throwing was just getting super old. So I'm very pleased to say that this was part of that learning curve. Then the next one that I'll show you is my sock. So since the last time I finished the first of my socks. So here it is. This is where it was the last time you saw it, this red one. And I finished the toe. So this is using the Crazy Sock Lady tutorial for Vanilla Socks on Magic Loop, which I have linked below. And I basically did the decreases for the toe and then Kitchenered it up. And here it is. It looks really bad because I don't have sock blockers yet, but I am going to buy some so that I can like actually show it off a lot better. This is using um, Osterman Step Yarn. It has a slip heel. And here it is on my foot. <laughs> I'm wearing shorts if you're, if you're wondering why there's just a bare leg. But yeah, there it is on my foot. It fits. It's really comfortable really comfortable and I cast on the second one to avoid the one sock curse this is where we are on the second sock so their work cuff down so I finished the cuff and I'm like 10 rounds into the leg and I think the pattern calls for doing like 60 rounds on the leg but 30 same as this sock because I personally don't like tall socks the, or well I like them like a little bit more than an ankle sock but not too much more than an ankle sock I don't like them to like go all the way up my leg that bothers me so I'm just gonna do that on this one and I am making some progress so maybe by the next time I'll have like gotten you know to the heel we will see and this is what the ball looks like when it's in ball form and then the last knitting project is I pulled out my Wool in the Gang blanket again. So this is the Good Times blanket. And the last time that you saw it, I was still working on the pink stray because I'm doing mine in, what's the name of the gray? Stone gray, I think. Pink rose and white noise. 
I don't know. It's like the pink, the gray, and the white. I'll put the names on the screen. And since then, I have finished the pink stripe and joined in the white ball. So I am a few rows into the white. And this is how it's looking. It's just worked in plain garter stitch. And essentially, when I finish this white block, it'll repeat. So then it'll be gray, pink, white, and then it'll be finished. It is very big. So like, I don't foresee this being finished in the near future, but at least I pulled it out again and made some more progress. The last kind of thing to talk about before we do haul, sewing and quilting. So I have worked on my Christmas quilt and I also did like a little sewing project. So I will show you the sewing project first, I think, because that's a finish. So basically I didn't have anywhere to put like scraps of thread when I was sewing, like, you know, when you cut off the thread and it would just make like piles everywhere. I decided to make a little thread catcher that is attached to a pin cushion. So I used an online tutorial for this, which I will link and I'll put the name on the screen of the tutorial giver. <laughs> as it were. And I used more of my Moda folktale. You know this is my favorite thing in the entire world. So basically, I put the little Evelyn across the pond. So it's like a flat bottom and I already have stuff in here from my quilt. <laughs> and then this little pillow has rice in it and then it's, which is where the pins come from, and then it's attached via this hanger essentially. To the back and then sewed on with some X's and then there is a little bit of stabilizer in this part so that it doesn't like flop too much like in the lip and the color on the inside is the same as the lip. I did this in, a, in an afternoon and it was super easy and it's honestly perfect like it doesn't slide at all this rice is weighted perfectly so it just sits on the table like this and then when I cut a thread, I bump it in here. And then when it's filled all the way up, then I'll throw it out. Because these aren't the kind of scraps that you would keep. Like, they're, like, too small to do anything with. But, yeah. So, I made this. And it matches my little non-slip sewing mat that I made before. But if you haven't made something like this to, like, catch your threads, you really need to. It's honestly cleaned up my sewing area so much. It doesn't feel like I'm just, like, making an absolute mess every time I sew now. So, that's really nice. I keep doing this so you can kind of see how it would hang but yes this was this was a super fun weekend project okay and now for the quilt this is gonna be really hard to show I might have to get Nigo to take a picture of me holding it later but so since the last time I have finished the quilt top and quilted it and based it around the edge. So the only thing left to do is put on the binding, which is uh, something that I wanna do today because I wanna have this on the couch tonight when we're watching TV and stuff. And so here it is. Ooh. Oh, this is gonna be literally impossible. Okay, <laughs> I'll like go in a circle and then I'll put up a picture. So here it is. This is a shortcut Christmas quilt from Fat Quarter Shop. It was a freebie. Can you see that? No. Nope. <laughs> this, this is an absolute mess. Okay. It's basically like a Christmas tree in the middle with then a border around it. I'll post a picture of it. And I used a charm pack from Ruby Star Society, the Flurry charm pack, for this part. And then all the white background is Ruby Star Society Gold Speckle on white. And then for the back, I actually had to piece the back because I didn't have enough of the fabric left over. So it's the white and then also a strip of what I had left over from my fat half of the this part that I used for the pillow. And then some of the jelly roll that I'm using for the binding. So the white part of the jelly roll is here. A more navy kind of part is pieced together here and then I used leftover charm squares for that part so this is the back so there's like a stripe on the back 
and then there's another stripe of the white on the side. So this comes out to being like a lap size. You can't, there is a little bit of like shadowing from the color on the front and the back, um, but it just doesn't bother me at all. I, I really don't mind. It's just because it's like white with color showing through it. But I don't care at all. And so for the quilting, I machine quilted this myself and it was an experience, <laughs> but I did basically like a rhombus kind of pattern every three inches. So essentially I did three inch horizontal stripes and then I did three, like three inch ones on the vertical at 45 degree angles so that it made these little like sideways rhombuses. And I think it turned out really well. Like, is it perfectly straight everywhere? Absolutely not. This is the first like full size quilt I've ever made, but I just really like it. And I cannot wait to get it finished. And for the binding, I'm using the Flurry Jelly Roll and I'm gonna do a scrappy version. So I have like pieced, I've already pieced it. So I've like pieced together and I, I know I could have pieced it flat rather than diagonal. Like I could have pieced it just immediately end to end. But I liked the idea that like this, it kind of looks like a, a like candy cane stripes. So yeah, so I've pieced this like this and this is gonna be my binding. And I'm planning to bind that later today. Hey y'all, it's editing Evelyn again. I just wanted to pop on here again with a little update because I did finish binding it last night. And here is an adorable picture of Nico all cozy up under the quilt on the couch. And so this is a finish. And then my plan is, is I'm gonna make a matching table runner for the, the table for Christmas using this pattern. It's, it's another free pattern that basically takes like jelly roll strips and then you cut them into different lengths and then piece them all together as a strip and then cut the strips apart and then piece them that way so that it looks like all of these like tiny little stripes of different colors and i think that'll be my project for during the week this week with the rest of the jelly roll that's left so that is all of the crafting projects that i've worked on the last thing to do is to go through haul and then talk a little bit about plans Actually, the first thing is Stitchy Kindness. So I won a giveaway from Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch for the After the Rain chart by Hello from Liz Matthews. And Liz sent it to me with one of her little Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch needle minders. So that was like a super fun thing to receive in the mail. I did not at all expect to uh, win this, <laughs> so that was super fun. And I can't wait to put this on a project. I've been kind of saving it to show you, but my plan for this is I think I'm gonna do a, like a stripe of three of them vertically and I'm gonna do like orange pink and yellow kind of colorway and put it in our bedroom because that's the colors of our bedroom and we kind of have this like mid-century mod vibe in there and I think this would look really cute in there on one of our walls so this is something I want to start next year in like my spring stitching you know okay so now for things that I've bought. I will do the lengths of the month things next. So I got my threads of the month for September from Coloring Cotton and these are what I used on my little kitty. Or well at least I used some of them. So I used Salamander for the pumpkin and then I used mulberry for part of the like trick-or-treat bucket he's holding and then I used avocado for the green in that one these are just such good Halloween colors and then the other two that it came with because I get the five skein version was purple parrot which is a bit different from this purple you can see it's a bit more bluey and then this one is Autumn Gourd, which would have been perfect for Oh My Gourd if I hadn't already stitched it. <laughs> but yeah, so these are super cool. I can't wait to use them, like sub them into things more. 
I really like the quality of their threads. Like, having Stitch with them now, they're really, really nice. And then we have some news because I got an email and there was a spot open on the Color and Cotton Fabric of the Month Club. And I got on it. So, I got, and if you don't want to be spoiled, this is the October 21 Thread Club and Fabric Club. So, they get sent to me together now. And I've moved my thread subscription to monthly now because I'm already getting the fabric monthly. So, like, they should just both come at the same time. The reason I did it every other month before was for shipping. But she, I've, like, contacted them. Their customer service was great. And they've, like, let me combine them and only pay shipping once, which is amazing because I am international. So, like, they were fabulous about it. I loved it. Cannot recommend their customer service enough. So, we'll do the October 21 Thread Club first. And so, these are more of, like fall into Christmassy kind of colors but they are but they are fall we have pale ochre pumpkin jack which is a cool gradient there between like a brown and an orange peach cobbler holly berry and forest I really like this green it has a good mist of like a limey appley green and a more forest green I really like that green that would be cool for some Christmas stuff and then the fabric of the month is cypress so it's this like sagey kind of green yeah that's a good that's a pretty good match it's like a sagey kind of gray green I get the 32 count back quarter but this will be really nice for some projects I imagine this is going to be incredibly versatile for any time I want like a sagey green I cannot believe I got on this fabric of the month club it's honestly still the best thing to have happened to me <laughs> in the past few months I just cannot believe that that happened I saw the email and I was like oh it's going to be sold out and then I like clicked on it and I was like Oh, oh my god, there's spots, there's spots. Run, run. <laughs> I'm really excited to be able to stitch on that so I can like report back on the quality of their fabric because everybody just raves about it. So I'm super excited. I can report that their threads are awesome because I have used them now. Okay, and then my last blank of the month club is my fabric of the month from Chromatic Alchemy came in. This is the October and this is Vivacious. So it's like a super cool magenta-y purple and orange. You can see more of the orange there on the back. And I get the 32 count fat eight. I really like her fabrics. They're so fun for like ornaments and stuff because they're just so colorful. And they're all Zweigart based. So yeah, if you haven't tried Chromatic Alchemy, you really should. And I feel like she has really good, like, she's she's always been very responsive to me if I reached out to her about anything. And she's pretty transparent about, like, lead times and supply issues and stuff, um, which I really appreciate. Because I think there are some other, you know, companies where that might not be the case. And she's really good. So then, let's go into other things. <laughs> so I got some quilting gloves because I was having a really hard time gripping my quilt so I got the so easy ones in the small medium and they look like this that was horrible that was a horrible way to show that okay I'll put it on so this is like backwards because so easy is supposed to be on the front of your hand but it has these like grippies on the side and also on the top that really help you like slide the quilt through because it was really starting to hurt my shoulder like how hard I was pushing um, and this like helps it just zip right through so that felt a lot better I was using this last night when I was doing the like basing around the edge before binding and It was honestly like a dream So this was very well worth the you know, like four pound I paid for this I will link these I got them off Amazon. I bought this snow globe from Hobbycraft and it's like a add your own photo and basically you like twist this off and then there's like a hole on the inside where you're supposed to put a photo in. But look how thick that hole is. I can definitely stick stitching in here and like 
a pin stitching and have it be thicker and it'll still fit. So my idea is to put the snow globe in here and then it's like a real snow globe. I'm so excited by this idea. So I'm stitching it like, I'm gonna end up doing it like one over one on 28 count so that it's small enough to fit in here, which will be dramatic, but I do have a daylight magnifying lamp that Nico bought me for my birthday which I think I forgot to show because I just use it all the time. I'll take a, I'll put a picture of it on the screen and I'll link it below. But anyway, that thing is an absolute dream. So like it, it won't be a problem to see with that, but then it'll be teeny enough for this. And it is like double sided. So I think I'll do some kind of fabric on the back so that you can see that from the back. But I think this is just gonna be such a cool idea to make it be a literal snow globe. I'm so excited. Because, yeah, the reason why I was like, oh, but there's no way stitching will fit inside of there. And then it came, and it's like a full, like, centimeter. And I was like, oh, my God, that's totally going to work. It's like more than half an inch. It might be like three quarters of an inch. So that's like, I'm very excited. I went to Sonic Craft here in town, and I got a couple things. So I got the Hemline Magnetic Pin Dish which I already am using. Here you can see I have a needle threader and some of my Clover Wonder Clips on it. And this just sits in front of my sewing machine and it just, when I take a pin out, it just snaps right on there. It's the literal best. <laughs> I just knocked it off as I said that. No, it's literally so good. I love this thing. It was worth every penny. Actually, when I checked out, the lady at the checkout was like, oh my God, that's gonna change your life. <laughs> I was like, yes, yes it will. And it did. She was not wrong. I also, while I was there, got this Superba Bamboo Superwash Sock Yarn. It's 100 grams and this is the color, I'm not entirely sure what color this is, but it's like a, it's like a blue. And I think I'm gonna use these to make Nico some socks at some point, because he really likes blue. The last thing I got while I was there was some um, fat quarters. So I got this fat quarter of Lewis and Irene fairy lights. And this is glow in the dark. Ooh. But it's like a forest with these like little fairy houses and trees and stuff and little fairies. I don't know. I just thought it was cute for like a bag or something. I don't know. I couldn't resist. <laughs> I saw an owl and I was like, oh, okay, well, there we go. But yeah, it glows in the dark. Like the little fairies glow in the dark and the lights I think in the tree houses and then the other fat quarter I grabbed while I was there because they have like a section with just like pre-cut fat quarters that you can just kind of rifle through the bin and this is Lewis and Irene as well but it's like one of their forest ones which I thought would be cool for like a fall bag and this also glows in the dark the deer and the little like moon I just thought those were really pretty for like bags in the future. I don't know if I would use them for something else other than a bag, but I just thought they would be really pretty for future project bags. So that was my uh, Sew Knit Craft adventure. And then when my sister was here, my sister is an artist, as you know, um, if you've been watching me since the beginning. <laughs> and while she was here, we went to an independent art store in town and they had a section with these like little wood things and I picked them up for finishing. So this is like a super teeny mini easel, very small. But I thought this would be really cute for some smalls. You know, if I wanted to do something as like a flat finish instead of like a little pillow or something. So I picked that up, it was like a pound. And then I got one of these little wooden boxes this is Tyndall's is the name of the store and it's just like this and I thought I could do you know like a finish on top and have it be like a display piece I don't have anything in mind for these but I just thought like oh those will be good things to have in my like finishing stash and they were very reasonably priced the last like purchase that I made other than you know like hitting up starts and whatever for all the starts I've already told you about is I bought the stuff to be able to make needle minders in the future if I wanted to from like pins, like magnet, um, not magnet, 
like pin badges. I bought the stuff off of Amazon. I bought some E6000 plus glue. I bought a like metal file <laughs> and some metal um, clippers to like clip off little rings that they have rings on them. And then some of the Neo Dimium magnets. So that's just like for in the future. And I had bought these little Christmas jewelry charms, like a little pack of them from Amazon as well, um, with the thought that maybe they could be needle minders, but they came and they're like literally so small. So instead, I think I'm gonna use them as like zipper pulls, which leads me to my plans. So obviously my plan is to finish the quilt, start the table runner, work on my We Need a Little Christmas Sal. And then the last thing that I wanted to do is I wanna make some project bags for my like Christmas projects. I'm only gonna make like four, so just some of them will get them, but I'm just in a Christmas sewing mood. So I'll show you the fabrics that I wanna use for that really quick. And I've already put little zipper pulls on these from the set, so. So the first one is using this blender that I got from Sew Knit Craft and this little snowflake um snowflake wall snowman <laughs> print from craft cotton company and i'm going to use these white zippers for the little inside pouch i make in the outside and then the zipper pulls i used a little snowman you see that and a little mitten oh face the right way and a little mitten so that's the first bag and i I think I'm gonna do this as the inside and this is the outside. I reserve the right to change my mind. <laughs> then this next one um, is I ordered some Rifle Paper Company fabrics from their Christmas collection from this year, I believe. So I'm gonna use this blender that I also got from Sonic Craft a while ago. And this one, this super cute, like, retro Christmas lights with then the gilded part on the ring and I'm gonna use some yellow and green zippers for this one for some contrast and on these ones I put a little Santa and a little Rudolph the next one is more rifle paper co oh they're called holiday classics that's the name of the line holiday classics so it's like this winter village, which I'm gonna use for the outside. And then the inside is these little Christmas trees. And they, they sparkle, they have like a silver for the snow. And then I'm gonna use some gray zips on this one with little trees, cause there's so many trees. So there's this tree and then this tree. And then the last of the Christmas bags is more rifle <laughs> because I just love this collection. And this one is specifically going to be for Lucky Nutcracker, I've already decided. So it is a Nutcracker print. And there's like Drosselmeyer and like the ballerinas and the Nutcracker and the Mouse King. You can see the Nutcracker on this side. And Clara and then like little candy and the sugar plum fairy and everything. I love this. I love this so much and for the inside I'm gonna use this little like red star Fabric for it also from rifle and then I'm gonna use red zippers on this one and I used one is like a little wreath Can you see that? And then the other one says Noel And this is specifically for Lucky Nutcracker. And I hope I can make these up this week. And then the last one, this is not a Christmas bag, but I just wanted to make a Halloween bag to put my Halloween Stitch Robia piece in. So I'm gonna use some Jill Howarth Tiny Treaters. So the rest of the word search is gonna be the inside. And then for the outside, I'm gonna do her like light blue, gray Tiny Treaters one. And it has all these cute little animals trick-or-treating look how cute they are so yeah and this all i 
I think this does glow in the dark as well for the little like constellation-y part. So yeah, so that'll be the outside and this will be the inside. And I'm just gonna use some black zips on that one. Um, I don't have Halloween zipper pulls, I just have the Christmas ones. But my goal in the future, I think, is to get more zipper pulls because I just think it's fun. So yeah, so I wanna make those bags this week and work on the Christmas table runner and keep working on my, we need a little Christmas south. That actually is everything. So I'm going to give you the little Christmas tour now and then we will say bye. Okay, so here is the start of the Christmas tour. So this is our tree this year. And this is the little frosted pumpkin ornament I finished earlier in the year. And we just got this new ornament that says first Christmas engaged, which is really cute. So we went for like a bit of a more pops of color this year. I got these really cute little holly berry clips. And these little, I really like the little candy canes. If you can see them. So we do an artificial tree because my family's just always done that. My mom's allergic to real trees and I'm just used to it. <laughs> and then I got these Christmas curtains from Amazon, which I'll link. And then I got this little to Santa pillow, which I just thought was so cute from, I believe it was Wilco. And then I got this little Christmas pillow cover from Sheen, which I will link. And this is my pet owl, Alfred. <laughs> and then I got this little Christmas tree tray for our bar cart. Excuse my tea bag. <laughs> and then over here by the door, there's my Robin wreath. And if I open the front door, this is the Christmas wreath I made. So I went to Hobbycraft and they had this little star and then they had like a set of wreath, like construction stuff. And so I put this little wreath together and then I used a bit of a velvet red ribbon. So that's currently hanging on our front door. And then here above the couch, I have this little like icicle hanging thing. I think in future years, I want to put like a Christmas sign here instead of this art piece that we usually have. Um, that's the painting Gwen did of me and Nico. And then this, I have just bought a little poster thing that's going to go here. This is have yourself a Merry Christmas and we'll take this down for the time being. Here's my stitchy spot. <laughs> Ignore all the cords on the floor. So this is the lamp I was talking about, the daylight mag lamp. And this is my Lowry stand and my Kindle is connected to it, which I do all my stitching from. And so I got these two pillowcases as well from Sheen. And this is where the Christmas quilt will go in a few hours. <laughs> I'm very excited about it. And then if I spin you around, we have this rug here in front of the tree that says, may you always be merry and bright. And I just got this from Asda, I think, like George Asda. Anyway, it's very good. And then I just think it's super cute. And it goes with the vibe, you know, like you can kind of see what I'm going for here. And then here in the little side armchair, we have the frosted pumpkin pillow. And then another one of these pillowcases I got from Sheen. It says ho, ho, ho. And a little Hedwig owl. <laughs> and then this is like the Christmas bookcase. So we have Hello Dear and the little Nutcracker from Frosted Pumpkin. And then I got this from Hobbycraft as well as this little bottle tree. And then this home sign is usually here. And then these are Nico and I's stockings. And I made these little ornaments to go on them from Tiny Modernist. Cozy Critters, I think is the name of the pattern. And I did them on perforated paper. And then up here at the top, we have a George Washington doll that we got Nico for when he finished his PhD because he studies early America. And then this is the Stitch Rovia piece that I stitched last year. It's Soaring Santa or Santa's Coming, depending upon if you're on Etsy or Readly. And then here above the TV, 
we have Merry Christmas and a little star. These are little stars, the light. And then a little pom-pom garland over our pictures of us. And so that's what hangs there in front of the TV. And then around this little doorway, I put just some more colorful lights for fun to kind of pull off of some of the colors in the rest of the decor. This is how the dining table is currently coming together. I, like I said, the Christmas table runner will be going here. And here in the middle, we have our like Christmas cookie tin, which matches some of our Christmas plates here and the Christmas mug I showed you earlier. I've gotten some more Christmas plates this year that are coming um, tomorrow. And then we have this little stag and another one of those trees from Hobbycraft and I put some ornaments on the table. And then I have the Christmas crackers on here and then these napkins with the napkin rings, which I got off of Amazon. They're little gold snowflakes and I thought they went really well. And then I have these plates on top of red chargers that I got from Wilco and these little snowflake mats which I also got from Wilco. They're placemats, but they also hold heat up like like when you put like a hot plate on them, which is gonna be really good for like Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner and stuff. They should go under, but because of the chargers, I thought it was cute if they went on top. And then I put that like that. So that's how the Christmas table is going together. And then here above my sewing machine area, which I have shown you before, I put a little garland around the staircase um, and I hung some ornaments from it and put a little, some pops of holly in there. And this, this like these lights are usually above the TV, um, but not right now <laughs> because of Christmas. And then <clears throat> here on this wall into the kitchen, I put this little Merry Christmas wreath, which I got off of Etsy, but I added some more greenery to it and this velvet bow it looks kind of weird from this angle there that's better but yeah so I added the pine cone and that kind of greenery there and then the last thing is right here above the doorway into the kitchen I put a little mistletoe and I added some little extra greenery to it so when it came it was just this part and I added these little other tufts of greenery and then wrapped it in some red ribbon for a bit of a cute little mistletoe vibe going into the kitchen. And so then you can kind of see the, look into the living room. So yeah, I hope you guys liked that little tour. I am really been enjoying, you know, adding a little bit more to my Christmas decor every year. I can't imagine what it's gonna be like in like 20 years, how much stuff I'll have. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video catching up with me and all of my fall stitching and Christmas plans. Let me know if you want to join in on the We Need a Little Christmas sale. Again, it's just work on Christmas projects. Um, you can follow a schedule or don't, um, but just put them on the hashtag to kind of spread a little joy in our community this Christmas season. season excuse me, because I think everyone needs that this year after another year of, <laughs> of the global pandemic. I think everyone needs a little joy and stitching in Christmas lights. If you liked what you see, um, please like this video. You can also subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so that you're notified whenever I upload. I'm sort of doing like every month and a bit <laughs> at the minute um, just because I'm so busy with my PhD but hopefully in the future I can be a little more regular than monthly but I don't know. I don't know what will happen <laughs> in the near future. You can, in the meantime, follow me over on my Instagram where I post more regularly, like in between updates on my stitching progress, finishes, I share stuff on my stories. I recently just shared a little mini tour of some parts of Cambridge um, on my stories. I made a highlight for it at the top called Cambridge, if you want to click through that and see a little bit about where I live. I did that just the other day and I had some really, really sweet feedback on it. A lot of people really enjoyed it, which I'm glad. I'll, I'll do more stuff like that in the future where I just kind of like took you around town a little bit. So if you're interested in that, go check it out. My Instagram is Evelyn Across the Pond, same as here on YouTube. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. 
If you are new, thank you for sticking around. If you're coming back, thank you also for spending more stitchy time with me. And I can't wait to stitch Christmas things with you. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.